Today's show is just about basically how to shop, how to shop, because we think we're, 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 we're shopping heart healthy, but we're not. We think we're eating foods that aren't going to make us fat, but we're not. And speaking of fat, speaking of getting fat, okay, my buddy Bones is with me again. Uh, by the way, he had a good Halloween, all right? It's really when he gets his most attention, so he's a little, you know, feeling a little lonely today. So I'm going to, like, take him along with me today. And you see, he's a skeleton, okay, in case, you know, you guys didn't realize. He's a skeleton. I need to fatten him up. I need to put fat on his bones. The food in front of me will do that. The food in front of me will get Mr. Bones fat. Oh, and it'll increase his blood pressure, increase his cholesterol, or I should say, you know, lower his HDL, and cause a whole host of other problems like type 2 diabetes and heartburn or reflux esophagitis. Is, is, is that okay with you? He, does, he seems kind of, uh, uh, you know, reticent today. But anyway, let's, let's get going. Let's get going. Uh, oh, you know what? Before we start, I, for the third time this, this, this week, or I should say this week for the third time, I decided to reread Gary Tobbs's Good Calories, Bad Calories. Gary Tobbs' is Good Calories, Bad Calories, a book, by the way, that when I first saw it, you know, I, I was a little against reading it because calories don't mean anything, okay? So this is uh, uh, Gary Tobbs' is Good Calories, Bad Calories, should be the Bible in nutrition, uh, nutritional biochemistry. Every medical student should be required to read this. Every nutritionist, dietitian, physician, anyone who wants to renew their medical license needs to read this book, okay? Let me just read the inside uh, jacket here, okay? Pay attention. This is interesting. And now, these are not my words. I'm reading the inside jacket of Gary Tobbs's, and it says, in this groundbreaking book, you better believe this is a groundbreaking book. The result of seven years of research in every science connected with the impact of nutrition on health Award-winning science writer Gary Tobbs shows us that almost everything we believe about the nature of a healthy diet is wrong. For decades, we have been taught that fat is bad for us, carbohydrates better, and that the key to a healthy weight is eating less and exercising more. Yet with more and more people acting on this advice, we have seen unprecedented epidemics of obesity and diabetes. Tobbs Tobbs argues persuasively that the problem lies in refined carbohydrates, that is white flour, sugar, easily digested starches, via their dramatic effect on insulin, the hormone that regulates fat accumulation, and that the key to good health is the kind of calories we take in, not the number. There are good calories and bad ones. Tobbs traces how the common assumption that carbohydrates are fattening was abandoned. In the 1960s, when fat and cholesterol were blamed for heart disease and then wrongly were seen as the causes of a host of other maladies, including cancer. He shows how these unproven hypotheses were emphatically embraced by authorities in nutrition, public health, and clinical medicine, in spite of how well-conceived clinical trials have consistently refuted them. He also documents the dietary trials of carbohydrate restriction, which consistently show that the fewer carbohydrates we consume, the leaner we will be with precise references to the most significant existing clinical studies. Let me repeat that. With precise references to the most significant existing clinical studies, he convinces us that there is no compelling scientific evidence demonstrating that saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease, that salt causes high blood pressure, and that fiber is a necessary part of a healthy diet. Based on the evidence that does exist, he leads us to conclude that the only healthy way to lose weight and remain lean is to eat fewer carbohydrates or to change the type of carbohydrates we do eat and, for some of us, eat virtually none at all. Good calories, bad calories is a tour de force of scientific investigation, certain to redefine the ongoing debate about the foods we eat and their effects on our health. This book was published, became available September 2007. And to me, it is depressing to learn that it is not or hasn't been one of the number one bestsellers out there. The number one bestsellers out there dietarily on the diet market are books that contain a vast majority of incorrect, 
biochemical or I should say nutritional ways to eat. They're just plain wrong. They're based on belief systems. The belief that eating whole grains and fruits is safe for us. And armed with those improper beliefs, we go to the supermarket. And there's supermarkets out there that have insignias or mottos where if you look at this insignia in it, or if you see it in this aisle or in this food, then it's a safe product to eat. You can eat it. It's okay. It won't, it won't, it won't be a problem. Consistently, these products contain way too much sugar, way too many carbohydrates, and not enough saturated fat. Let me just say this again. The American Heart Association states we should get limited amounts of saturated fat in our diet per day. I go directly against that, and I say we need more saturated fat, more cholesterol, more protein, and we need to back off on the carbohydrates in their many disguises. And we are about to take the disguises off these foods today. The first thing that's in front of me here is grape nuts. Now, let me just emphasize this because, you know, before the show started, there were questions about, well, gosh, you know, I have foods and brand names and, you know, a Post makes grape nuts. You know, uh, what's the problem? Are they going to come after me for defamation of character or slander or, or libel or as the case may be? Here's the problem. The defense to defamation, slander, libel, whatever you want to call it, is the truth. And I'm here to tell you the truth. I'm going to directly read from the side package and label of grape nuts in a second, okay? I guarantee most viewers out there have learned in biology, college, wherever, the daily news, who knows, that carbohydrates, including complex carbohydrates, especially complex carbohydrates, are broken down into simple sugars are broken down into simple sugars. Now, uh, I, let's see, I had a, uh, I just happened to bring this. This is my radio show, WSNR 620. This was last week's radio show, and this was from Dartmouth-Hitchcock uh, Medical Center, and this was right on. And it states here that 100% of carbohydrates, 100% of carbohydrates are broken down into glucose, and that is true, and that is true. So not all the information out there is wrong, but most of it is. Back to grape nuts. I'm looking at grape nuts. I'm holding grape nuts in my hand. The first thing that comes to mind, and if anyone's ever poured a bowl of grape nuts in their in their in, in a bowl, my, the first thing that becomes apparent is where are the grapes and where are the nuts? Not in here. Back to the cereal box. Okay. Let's see. Total carbohydrates. I'm reading right from the side package and label. Total carbohydrates: 48 grams. Whoa. Now, these carbohydrates are going to be broken down into sugar. But now I must, uh, uh, in the defense of uh, uh, grape nuts, state that there's also 7 grams of dietary fiber. Now, to arrive at the proper amount of carbohydrates in a particular serving size, one needs to subtract the fiber, which is indigestible. Nothing happens to it in our bodies. It passes out unchanged. You have to subtract the fiber from the total carbs, which leaves you with 41 grams of carbs per serving. Now, that's a lot of sugar. And, you know, it's, it's, it's confusing because people, when they read this, will see other carbohydrate, 37 grams, sugar, 4 grams. The problem you run into is that you, you're dumping into the bloodstream over the course of time uh, uh, 41 grams of sugar. Now, the argument's going to be, the argument's going to be, no, no, this is a this is a complex carbohydrate, man. This is this is whole grain wheat with barley. I'm reading from the from the front. Natural whole grain wheat with barley cereal. So that's a complex carbohydrate, Doctor Carlson. You're wrong. Those are good for you. Really? Well, any diabetic out there who eats grape nuts and checks their blood sugar is going to see their blood sugar rise. It happens with whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta, and I'm not here to pick on grape nuts. I'm here to teach. This is education. I'm teaching you. All right, let's put grape nuts aside here. Okay, right in front of me here is whole milk, and I think I have, I think I have some Skim Plus. Okay, so I got I got here Skim Milk, and I got regular whole milk. Right now, Skim Milk, of course, has less fat in it. So what I teach my patients is that the more fat you remove from a product, you increase the carbohydrate content. The more fat you remove from a product, you increase the carbohydrate content. We know that we need well. We should know that we need more saturated fat and cholesterol in our foods, all right? So the less fat we have, the more dangerous it is, the more we're going to see obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. And let me reiterate, because I said it at my first show, okay? Heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and obesity, for the most part, can be prevented. And once had, can be treated and possibly even cured. Type 2 diabetes can certainly be cured with the proper dietary approach.